Page 108, Chattanooga Choo Choo. This is a golden oldie. You find lots of recordings of this. This is a fun piece. Now, at the beginning, we have these grace notes. Play them pretty much together. Just release the little note. Like so. They say quickly at the bottom. They say quickly before the main note. In, in this style, in this piece, because there's different ways to play grace notes, I recommend you play them together and just release them. Like so. If you're going to play it one at a time, very quickly, because it needs to sound... It's to sound sort of like a train whistle. You want it to be a little irritating. Like so. And that's how I recommend you do it. Where, wherever they are in the piece, I do it the same way. Let's go down to second line after the reverse repeat sign. You have these eighth notes. And they're just eighth notes. One and two and three. And one and two and three and four and one. Just work out the fingering. It works out very nicely. Page 109, second measure. Watch this fingering. These chords, when you take them together, that's the fingering for it. So that, yeah, I, fourth finger. And then fourth finger, because that's the chord. Actually, it's here. But fourth finger. And second finger on the second line. Again, and E flat there, and then lift up and go up. The, the bottom note, these are just eighth notes, you don't hold them down. You can do a 2 4 here on that F sharp B, B flat if you want. Your fingering is good, I like this fingering. Top page 110. You've had all this before. It's very repetitious once you kind of get it. You get the idea of what it is. Let's go on down second line, second measure. Third line. We changed key signatures. Now we're in C major. The B flat went away. It's the same melody, it's just at a different key signature. Everything else is pretty much the same on page 111, second line here. Watch this fingering because you're here, but the last note in that measure, bring the third finger down to the A. That puts you in position for what's coming. And then for the half note FC, the C is tight. So you can hold it down when you play the G flat. And then lift up. And then third line. Now in the last measure of the third line, you can do a one, two if you want, if you can reach it to connect the melody, because the last two measures of that line is here. Here. So you can do that if you want, because there's no pedal here, and we want to connect it if we can. And then the last line you're here. And then you get a little pedal to help you connect these chords. I'm not going to bother to show the pedal in here for this video because that's all it's showing. So you just connect that one measure. And you lift it up after you play the notes in the last measure. That's all. Now this left hand, this has that ostinato thing going here. It's, but I recommend 5-2 uh, at the beginning of each of these patterns. Because this way the thumb doesn't have to do them all. The second finger can do the first one. And separate them lightly. You just want this pulsing going in the background. And for the most part, that's what the left hand is doing. You have a few other notes, but for the most part, that's what it's doing. Now, over on page 109, after the double bars at the top, this is a new section. We're entering a new section. It watch the rest. We need them. So it's rest, rest, rest. There has to be a difference between the the measures with the rest in it and the measures without. That's important. It's contrast. Third line here. Rest. Watch the chords. 
you, the first chord is a B flat F G and the next one is a B natural F A flat if you can you can do that if you want if you don't want the thumb on it but this here but and the last line half notes connect these and then we're back to the rest again rest rest now on page 110 again third line down after the key change we have this pattern again I recommend a, a 5-2 on the first one of each of these it's just a it's the same pattern different notes so and that's pretty much it for the left hand at the end of bottom of page 111 when you have that and then a D flat a flat not bad for the left hand. All the good stuff's going on in the right. You got to keep the left hand fairly soft. It has to be in the background. The left hand's providing that chug, chug, chug for the train type thing. So then you go put them together slowly because you got to work it out slowly and then gradually build it up. Don't try and go fast right off hand if anybody's listening. If nobody's listening, you can do what you want. But, but you don't want to torture somebody listening. So just keep it slow. the whole thing really 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 slowly dynamic wise the starts out medium loud and this is the introduction but when in the second line when the melody comes in the melody becomes medium loud and the company must got to go down so the second line the first measure you're here and then second measure this is this is it and the left hand suddenly soft When you get to the top of page 109, second ending, you're medium soft here. And then these chords go up to a medium low. So you're crescendo. Keep the left hand soft. Remember the left hand is a quarter note, quarter rest, quarter note. Go. Be careful there. You don't want to, don't want to connect these. So third line. And finally, the last line. You can connect the left hand. And then all of a sudden you're back to this. We need the contrast in the left hand between the measures that have rests in them and the measures that don't. That's an important contrast that needs to be brought out. Over on page 110, it's a continuation of the same kind of stuff you've had before. So you keep the same style going. I don't have a lot to point out there. Just in the left hand, make sure we get those rests when we need them. Because that's what we're after. But keep the left hand down. At the end of the piece there at the bottom of page 111 the last line here you're going to decrescendo down and you're going to retard retardando slow down so it's it's like the train coming to a stop here now this is a swing piece and in the style of swing we're going to swing the eighth notes that means long short long short so in the second line there when the melody comes in on the eighth notes instead of one and two and three and it's one and two and three and four. Just the eighth notes, don't swing anything else. Now roadmap wise, you see the at the bottom of page 108 there's a first ending. So we're going to repeat back to the reverse repeat sign that's a couple lines above it. And then on page 109 we take the second ending and go on and we just play the rest of the piece. Now if you don't have the piece memorized, you've got to get this page turned without messing up the beat because the beat's got to just keep going. So you have to figure out how can I turn the page and not mess up the beat. Well there's a few possibilities. 
One is you have a friend turn the page for you. You don't have to worry about it. Second is you memorize the piece. You don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, we got to worry about it. And usually we'll look for something before or after the page turn where one hand is resting. That way you, you got time to turn the page. In this piece, that's not happening because the best rest you're going to get is a quarter note and that's not long enough. So what we may have to do is leave out notes. We don't like to do that, but sometimes you have to do that because the beat is more important. Don't mess up the rhythm. You can mess up notes if you have to, but don't mess up the rhythm. So you have a choice. At the bottom of page 109 in the last measure, leave out the left hand if you have to. Just play the right hand. And as the right hand is playing that, quickly turn the page with the left hand. Or, you memorize the first measure of page, top of page 1010, that, and play the last measure on 109 like it's written, don't leave anything out, and then whenever you start playing 1010, play the first note in the left hand, but not the second. And that way, as the right hand is playing these notes, then you use the left hand to go up. The, the right hand is busy. We can't use the right hand here. It's got the melody. We've got to have it. So the left hand is going to have to leave out notes someplace, and it's your choice where it happens. Leave out as few as possible, but you either at the bottom of page 109 leave something out, or at the top of page 110 you leave something out. Otherwise, you've got to memorize the first two and a half lines of 110. Uh, page 110, just memorize them, and when you get down to the third line, second major, and while the right hand is doing this, the left hand has lots of rest to turn the page. You can do it then, but that, that means you got to memorize that junk. Ooh. So it's your choice how you get the page turned. Now when we do the, with the play with me, I'm not trying to perform it, so all I do is I do pages 108 and 109, and then we stop, turn the page, I count us in again, and we'll do pages 110 and 111. And that's how we do that. So that's how I get around it. Huh? And the fermata at the end of page 111, I'm going to hold that eight counts instead of four because I just double it with a, with a fermata when I'm playing with a metronome. So let's try this out slowly. We're going to start with pages 108 and 109, and then we'll do the others a little bit. I'll give us four counts. Now, I'm not doing any dynamics or anything. I'm just playing the notes so we can get the notes and the rhythms. Play it with me one hand at a time for a while if you need to. Hands. Left hand, right hand, yeah, okay. One, two, ready, go.
hands. Put your hands where they go. Four counts. One and two and ready and go and.